This is an experimental block. Probably my nicest brick yet. I mean, it's a sh short brick. It wasn't quite enough for the mold. Little ridge on top. As you can see, the sides are very, very nice. And the bottom reflects the uh, wrinkles on the paper. So if a person were to use, uh, say, took a piece of contact uh, paper and put it on the bottom of this, instead of using this paper that warps, come out better. And one of the things I did different was when I filled the mold, I took my uh, spatula, my scraper, and I pushed the refractory up against the corners of the mold like that. I didn't follow my own advice in terms of figuring out how much water to put in. I didn't mix it to consistency, but I've been trying to keep it wet to see if that will keep it from crumbling, as opposed to adding all the water up front, add the water as it's as it needed by keeping it wet. It's getting kind of dry right now, so I ought to shut my trap and get it back into something wet. Okay. One of the problems is we don't know at what point the hydration of the Portland cement quits. So how dry can we let it get? And safe answer B is don't. This is the general method of keeping it hydrated, keeping it wet and basically sit it in a shallow pan of water and then I bring the towel up over the top. Let's get some water, get that nice and wet. Okay. It's my native clay, which doesn't absorb much water, so that prevents cracking. On the left is five ounces of dry bentonite clay. On the right is five ounces of my local clay. Volume's about the same. Now when we hydrate bentonite, it expands over three and a half times its dry volume. And uh, this has started to dry and it's cracking as you can see. This is my native clay. It absorbed maybe about three ounces of water when I uh, wetted it. And uh, it's dried to almost the same volume. And yeah, that's really, that's not chocolate pudding. That's actually clay. See, we can make a, make a dent in it. From a shrinkage standpoint, this is going to be a much better clay to use than the bentonite. These two are pieces of the same brick. I fired this side up to 800 degrees C last night. And what, I don't know if you can hear the how it kind of rings. I mean, it feels like, it feels like refractory. It sounds like refractory. And difference between this and this is lime. I'm kind of happy with that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make an oven. And the edges, how crumbly are the edges, okay? If we go to these edges here, they're not too bad. So, and strength wise, it's probably as strong or stronger than the, than the soft brick. And it's a fairly light refractory as castables go. So I think that will mean it's got a good R value and will hold the heat in. I'm not saying it's a uh, castle light, but uh, it's 
probably way good enough for aluminum. That's my hope. See if there's any difference. But this has been in the water for one week. This has been in the water for a week, and it's going in for another week. When we get done, we're going to see if there's any difference in strength between the, between these two. And uh, although this seems plenty strong now, I think a week would be fine. But we know that the strength will increase, so we may as well try it. This is a drum from the clothes dryer. 